Hi, welcome to the Iguazio product tutorial. My name is Adi Irshten and I'm here to walk you through the product. So what is Iguazio? Iguazio is a data science platform with a focus on the operational side of data science, meaning that we're helping customers to move from lab to production and solve their MLOps challenges. The platform comprises of three parts, orchestration and management, serverless services, and the data layer. One of the most important components in the platform is a framework called ML1. ML1 is a machine learning orchestration framework. It's an open source that is embedded in the platform. This orchestration framework helps you to manage your machine learning pipelines from early deployment through model building to full pipeline deployment in production. ML1 leverages built-in services running on top of Kubernetes. Those are serverless services such as Spark, Presto, Nucleo, which is a serverless function framework, Dask, Hoverboard, and others. Those are used for building operational pipelines, including running models in an inference layer, as well as running training jobs at scale. Another thing that we have in the platform is a feature store, which is a framework for creating and managing features in a way that abstracts the data engineering part while providing a very robust data transformation layer for creating complex features and pipelines. Now, since the feature store is a big thing on its own, I'm not going to cover that in this video and we'll keep it for another session. Let's take a look at the product. When you log into the platform and go to the project view, this is where you get to see all of your data science projects with real-time statistics like the number of jobs and real-time functions that are currently running or in a failed state. By default, we have a bunch of demo projects and in this session, I'm going to use the getting started demo. So click on that project, takes me to the project overview screen, where you have a very comprehensive view about your project. You can see operational stats on the jobs and real-time functions that are currently running in your project, along with some information about other assets in your project. And from here, you can drill down to see more granular information about the model, features, jobs and pipelines, real-time functions, and etc. Drilling down to the jobs view, you can see all the jobs and workflows that are currently running in your project or have been running in the past. And for each and every job, we capture all the relevant details. So if we go to the training job, for example, you get to see all the relevant details and metadata about this job. Things like who ran the job, the duration, a link to the actual code that was used for this job. Then we have input tab, artifacts, results, and logs. The artifacts are logged in the system with all the relevant information, so when a job is generating an artifact, it gets stored and versioned, and you can view all the information here. In addition, you can click on the artifact to see more detailed information. For tabular artifacts, we are also running analysis on the data, so out of the box you are also getting metadata and statistics about this artifact. In addition to the artifacts, we also capture the functions code that were used by this job along with their version. If they are based on Git, by the way, then you get to see the Git URL for this code and you can actually view the code here. Now, how do you run a job? Obviously, you can do it programmatically, but you can also do it from the UI. So from the jobs wizard, I can pick up functions from our function marketplace. In the marketplace, we have all sorts of functions. You can find here analytics functions, training functions, pure machine learning stuff, or NLP, and more. So you can create your own functions and then reuse them instead of writing everything from scratch again and again. In order to run the job, you just select a function, enter the input data, the parameters, and just run it. Now, in addition to those jobs that we just covered, that by nature are more batch-oriented, in the product, you can also run what we call real-time functions, aka Nucleo, which serve as serverless function framework, typically used for real-time events processing and for running machine learning models within your inference layer. Nucleo is a very robust and scalable framework. It supports a wide range of triggers, including streaming engines like Kafka and Kinesis, and it also exposes HTTP endpoints. In the UI, you have lots of options to configure Nucleo, control its resources, set all kinds of settings like environment variables, builds, and more. Another cool feature is the API Gateway. It's basically a way for users to do rolling upgrades for functions. So for instance, if you have a function running a model in production and you want to gradually promote a new model, this is where you're going to use the API Gateway. 
Now models are first class citizen in the platform. So under the model tab, you can manage and monitor your models. Obviously that's a big topic, so we leave it for another video. Another first class citizens are features. And in this version, we're introducing the new feature store. This is also a big topic on its own, but just in a high level, the feature store is the place to manage your features. It provides a single pane of glass to manage and share features, as well as a very robust transformation service for creating complex features. The way we manage features is by using a feature set. And here you can see all the relevant information about the feature sets, the features, the transformation logic, preview data, statistics, etc. So you can find more about the feature store in the Iguazio channel. At the end of the day, the goal is to build an automated machine learning pipeline. So we've embedded Kubeflow pipeline as part of the solution, which is integrated pretty nicely with our ML1 orchestration tool. So in this pipeline view, you get to see your project's pipeline, typically comprises of functions for data collection, feature preparation, training, all the way down to model deployment and monitoring. As I mentioned in the beginning, Iguazio is a full-fledged platform and as such, we have services running in the platform. Those are microservices running on top of Kubernetes cluster. The Kubernetes deployment could be a vanilla Kubernetes or cloud-based like AWS EKS. And this is the view where users can view and manage all those services in the platform. To name a few, we have services like Jupyter, Spark, Presto, Nucleo, ML1, Grafana, and others. To create a service, you just go through this quick wizard. As a data scientist, I may want to create my own Jupyter, give it a name, set up resources, then you may have some custom parameters, and that's it. Once you do that, you're going to get your service up and running on the cluster in a few seconds. Aside of the UI, for the most part, as a developer, you develop your project in your IDE, like PyCharm. And using ML1, Iguazio provides an easy-to-use SDK for working with the platform from remote. So you can leverage the power of this cluster even if you're working from your laptop. That said, Iguazio does have a built-in Jupyter service. And if you open up Jupyter service here, you get lots of examples and end-to-end -end demos that are very useful to learn how to work with the platform. Also, when working here in Jupyter, it's already integrated with the other services in the platform. So for example, it's integrated with Spark and Presto. So you can easily work with your dataset using Pandas data frame and then move on to work with Spark or run a query using Presto from this Jupyter service. Iguazio comes with a data layer. So drilling down from the data tab, you can view all the data that resides on Iguazio data layer. We've actually built a key value and time series database, which is part of the solution. But even more than that, you can store all kinds of files on our object store and essentially get a single pane of glass to work with different types of data. This data can be accessed by Python SDK, REST API, or by frameworks such as Spark or Presto. In the product, we also have views for administrators. You can manage your cluster, storage, users. You can create and manage users and groups and set security policies. We have integration with LDAP, for example. You can view events and alerts. And we also have a comprehensive set of monitoring reports to monitor your cluster usage all the way down to individual pods. So if you want to learn more about the product, go to our documentation site. There are lots of useful information there. If you are a data scientist, I would recommend to go directly to the data science and machine learning section. In addition, in our YouTube channel, you'll also find additional materials. Hope you enjoyed the session. If you want to try it out, just go to iguazio.com, click on Try Iguazio, fill in the form, and we'll be in touch with you.